Hey guys, this is Eddie Only, and this is the Wrestling Nerd Broadcast. You're watching DC TV. Now here's your host, the voice, Dave Canning. It's you, it's me, it's DC TV. It's you, it's me, it's DC TV. Uh huh. Let's start the show. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, it is you, it is me, it is R.D. and G to P, the commissioner of the Wrestling Nerd Broadcast, the one, the only, Gerald the Puppet. And this week on episode 71, we are joined by a very special guest this week from Cleveland, Ohio. Please welcome 440's very own, Eddie Only. Eddie, thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, thank you for having me on it. This is this is great. I, I don't understand why people think that Cleveland is such a terrible place and they and they boo you and the rest of 440 when you guys are out there because I've been to Cleveland and it is fantastic. It's a little you cold, but it's great. You don't, I like when people say the Cleveland City because I don't want you guys visiting us. It keeps our rent low. <laughs> Listen, I've seen some I've seen some of the surrounding areas. I stay in Independence, Ohio when I visit Cleveland. Perfect. So. <laughs> I, I i stay in the outer parts i know my space you know now where about are you from i i live in uh in Cortland manor new york so but i've oh. gone out i've gone out to cleveland for uh the christmas story house out there they do a, a 10k yep. every year so i would go out there with my sister run the race visit the hall of fame and all that all right. so cool but it's it's yeah it's cold there i don't envy you guys so yeah <laughs> um but so yeah eddie so um 440, um, just how did you get involved with them exactly? How did, you know, how did you get involved with that group right there? Yeah, sure. Um, so 440 started off with just Ricky and Atticus. I, it was just Ricky by himself when he did, like, the original thing with, you know, taking the belt away from Nick. And then uh, then came along Atticus on, uh, like, I can't remember exactly what show off the top of my head. Um, but he was, I think is where he wrestled Tremont or he helped them like, like, you know, like basically get over in a match. And then, uh, well, fun fact, I learned how to wrestle me and both Atticus learned how to wrestle from Ricky. So we've always been close. And, uh, it basically was like the whole beginning of it was just like, Hey, let's just like start a cool faction of wrestling of just like us actually being friends, <laughs> you know? And, uh, it just kind of like, I don't know, it just popped off out of nowhere when it happened. It was kind of just like foot on the ground to keep running you know yeah and it's 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 pretty impressive to see where you know you look when when ricky took the bell from nick and now where gcw is where they're they're you know doing the hammerstein ballroom and they're arguably the the third top promotion in north america um what what has it been like from from a wrestler's perspective to see that kind of growth in such a quick amount of time with gcw yeah sure um so when it comes to GCW and stuff like that, like, obviously, like, I never wrestled there or anything like that, but, from, like, all tape, you know, like, I was just, you know, I'm still relevantly new in professional wrestling. Um, I was always, like, hanging around, especially with, like, all the Deathman shows, because I would just go out there with Eric Ryan, who's also was another, as another member of 440 that came in right after me. And, uh, oh, and Greg, duh. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about him. Don't put him over, you know? <laughs> but, uh, what was the question? I'm sorry. I completely forgot. I was making just, fun of Greg. I totally forgot. Just what's it like seeing the evolution of GCW from, oh. you know, in all this time? Yeah, I mean, it's cool. You know, it's, uh, it was cool seeing it from like when it was just like the company it was like a few years before it, just like tagging along and always wanted to be on the shows. Then, you know, finally getting to be there when I was doing all that stuff was pretty cool. Just cause like, I feel, you know, this is going to be just like a bias thing, but I feel like I was there for pretty much like, the important part of what gcw is now today you know making it not just like uh just kind of like those you want to see matches to storylines and actually good professional wrestling you know not saying the wrestling was bad but just like bringing in like a new element to the show definitely and and definitely one of the things that uh, i will i'm proud to admit to uh that sparked my interest in gcw was last summer when uh when matt cardona showed up um so uh, obviously first of all we just like to point out that Lindsay is probably watching this and she hates 440. Um, sure. So we just wanted to say hi to Lindsay before we get any further. Hello, Lindsay. <laughs> you are the best. We love you, Lindsay. <laughs> um, by the way, Gerald, welcome back. I haven't seen you in a few weeks, but I'm happy you're here. You know, it is so good to be back. 
You know what I got to say? Hold on one second. You know I have this Nicholas Gage fake micro brother. You know what they say? Puh, puh. I like the Eddie only. I like the four for all. Yes. I don't like Nick Gage with his pizza cutter. I like my friend Eddie only. <laughs> Oh, man. See, so, Eddie, you've already got the approval of Gerald. There's not much you'll, not left to do in this career other than win the the, 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 the world title wherever you go. So, um, but what what are your goals in terms of your wrestling future? You know, because obviously, you know, if you, if you fast or rewind like five years ago, you know, WWE was everyone's main goal, essentially, or most people's main goal. But now with companies like AEW and, and GCW flourishing, what is your what is your goals for yourself as a wrestler? Sure. Um, that's kind of like a funny question for me because I feel like my goals are a thousand percent different than everybody else's. Um, I have like a lot going on, like outside of professional wrestling. Wrestling is just one of those things that I feel like just kind of fell in my lap more than <laughs> something I strive for. Um, I'm just like happy to be here. And realistically, my only goal in wrestling is just do cool shit and make money. That's it. <laughs> I love the money. Money is my favorite. <laughs> Where do you know that I am so rich? I have my own gold. It's called Gerald Gold. <laughs> the um, but so, <laughs> but so in addition to wrestling, we know you're you're a great tattoo artist. Um, so two part question: What was your first tattoo, and have you ever tattooed yourself? Yeah, uh, first tattoo was a tattoo I did it myself. Um, I did like just like uh, I took the guy I was learning how to tattoo from, made me tattoo myself first. And I said like a little flower on my on my leg, and then my first fifty tattoos after that were all on homeless people. And then I, just because I moved to a state that I wasn't from, and I I lived in Nashville, and the shop that I worked at was downtown. So it's, usually when you're an apprentice, you just tattoo your stupid friends just because you suck at first, and they're just fine with getting sucky tattoos. But <laughs> I didn't have anybody in Nashville, so I would just like take homeless people on the street and tell them to come to the shop. <laughs> I was, I was going to say they did volunteer, right? Like you didn't find a homeless person <laughs> sleeping and be like. Let me draw on you quick. I'll just be like, yo, dude, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> wake up. I'm done. What? <laughs> ah, they wouldn't care anyways. Do you have a certain do you have a, oh go ahead, Ryan? Well, no, I was just gonna say I have zero tattoos and zero muscles, but Eddie, you posted the micro brawler tattoos. You got me really interested. I want <laughs> I want to get a little swoggle somewhere. Oh I'll yeah. Come sometime soon. Yeah, so, just man or maybe next time i come to california I, I think i want all of them there's about 200 so i gotta bulk up to have some <laughs> get real say. estate for all that ryan is the skinniest person here including gerald and he's like what's 200 you know, I'm not skinny. look at my muscles <sighs> <laughs> i can't with that gerald what would your tattoo be if you were to get one do you have tattoos well, you under the one tattoo of me Gerald Zipupé would get, it would be a French baguette wearing a beret, smoking a cigarette, kissing women. Wait, what are you guys kissing dudes? Well, because I'm French, I'm not Spanish. <laughs> Just kidding, I don't care. Jeez Louise, Eddie. Broadcast you know, is for degrees. everyone. I like him better again. <laughs> The broadcast is for everyone. We've got a shirt to prove it. Uh, but, but so yeah. Do you have a do you have a specific style that you that you specialize in with tattooing? No, not really. I just do everything. Uh, uh, I, I just don't do anything realistic. As long as it doesn't like you don't give me a picture of your dead grandma, I'm good. Well, that's all time I've got. So <laughs> that's that's all I wanted was a back piece of my grandmother. You know, I can't do that. No. I do not trust you to tattoo me, Gerald. I love Andy, you. let me borrow your machine. <laughs> Weird. Hey, wait, sorry. Now you're talking grandmas. If you did a piece of my grandma, if you try and take a picture of her, you get the bird. And she breaks your camera usually. So that'd be an interesting tattoo. My grandma flipping people off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'd be awesome. That'd be pretty wild. I could just see that happening in a death match where, you know, just somebody's like tied down one at and you just start tattooing them against their will. Just a thought, you know, I'd almost fear that more than a light tube against me. That's that's just my opinion. Um, but but speaking of hardcore and death matches, um, just 
how like what is the the vibe backstage you know before a death match ha- like is everybody mm-hmm. like watching and is everyone just nervous for the participants involved like I watch those at home and I just, I fear for everyone because I'm a weenie like that sometimes, but like just to get in the ring, you have my respect, but to do all of that, that, you know, that stuff in addition to is like, it, 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 it's mind boggling. So yeah, just what's, what's the mindset of a death match wrestler typically. Uh, I don't really know. I did it for a little bit, but I was like stupid at the time. You know, I was, uh, <laughs> I like I look back and I'm like I'm a moron. Why am I playing when I ever do that? Not saying I'm like <laughs> style of deathmatch wrestling. I just uh, I don't think I can ever like make myself do that again because I'm like realistically I'm a bitch. Like I don't I don't like <laughs> I just that's the reason the way I wrestle the way I do. I don't want to get hit. <laughs> I don't want to feel sharp stuff. You know, <laughs> I'd rather make somebody laugh than get punched in the face any day. But uh, when it comes to the deathmatch guys, I don't know, man. I just feel like most of them realistically, you just kind of take yourself out of it. I feel like going back to doing death matches the only way i feel like you can have a good one is just to act like it's not gonna happen you just gotta turn your brain off and just kind of accept it's gonna happen and just be good because i feel like the second you get nervous is when something bad's gonna happen like maybe you'll get cut bad or like maybe something will go wrong you know yeah it's 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 hard to watch at times it is entertaining and it's it's like i said you anybody that can do that has my respect because I like, like you, I'm a bitch. And I, I, you know, I, cr- I tear up at a paper cut. I'm like, Oh no, my day is yeah. ruined. Not do- <laughs> I asked to go <laughs> home early. Like boss, such we're out of band-aids. I gotta go. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but so I also know in, in doing some research that you, uh, used to be in a stable with Dan Housen. Yeah. Um, and so if what, what is Dan Housen like? Because obviously we, we see him coming up now on AEW and it's just, he is such a unique guy. Um, what you know, What is it like working with Dan Housen? He's a weird guy. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like, dude, like, I never really understood him when he first came around because he was always kind of quiet, and but he was always, like, super silly. And then when he first started doing the character, because, like, when, when I was with him, he was a spooky, scary guy, you know? Mm-hmm. Got yep. Dan out with bags on his head. He was kind of a pervert. It was fun. And uh, now, because that was what he told me. I was like, what do you want to do? And he's like, oh, I kind of want to be a creepy pervert. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> but uh, and we kind of stopped tagging after uh, the last time I think I tagged with him was actually in Columbus, Ohio at uh, this place called Unsanctioned Pro. And that's like kind of when he first started doing like the actual like Dan Housen thing, you know, that he's doing now. And uh, I fell in love with it. It was awesome. You know, like you just kind of stop doing like actual wrestling moves and just making everybody lose it over just being himself, which I thought was awesome. But him as himself, he's just kind of a weird guy. And he's oh, that's why I love him, you know. <laughs> Great. Uh, um, but so in all and also in addition to Dan House, and you are also uh, in a stable with uh former friend of the uh the broadcast, Magnum CK. Um yeah. what what is it like interacting with him? Because just in talking to him, his whole story and just what he's done since is it's just really a, it's really a good story to, to tell. Sure. Um, I don't really know the story because I never listened to it. Um, <laughs> since it said, sorry, Mac, I just never did. My bad. <laughs> That's um, like all my stories. No one ever listens. <laughs> yeah. I got no shit going on. I don't need to do shit, you know, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, dude, Mac was a super nice guy. You know, like I, I was only in the faction for so long. Um, you know, because there was the faction with all those guys. I kind of came in later because I was, like, just, like, day doing wrestling. Like, I was only maybe, like, three months into wrestling. And uh, so I kind of just did my part. You know, he did his part. We talked sometimes, but nothing really ever crazy. He was cool. You know, <laughs> that, that's all I can say. Man, was cool. Uh, we are... You know, uh... you know, I have some questions for you, Eddie. <laughs> What's up? Do you have a number one favorite funny tattoo that you have done on somebody that i've done on somebody yes i've never really done many funny tattoos i've just tattooed every funny area you could think of like the booty oh yeah a lot of booties oh stinky stinky okay my other question what's your other question do you have a number one favorite tattoo on your body um well, most of my tattoos I got in the basement when I was, like, a teenager, so they kind of suck. Uh, 
I think the only tattoo I really like is I have this Playboy bunny on my neck that I think is pretty cool because rest in peace of the man himself. And uh, I have my friends all tattoo their names on me. Like you probably can't see them, but anytime I would get one of my friends wasted, I'd always make them tattoo the name on me so I can, you know, show them how much I love them. So I guess I'll. <laughs> Cool. Well, I'll, I'll send you my signature. We can get that put on your leg too. I want to <laughs> right, right on the inseam there. Just so you always remember. Me. Sure. And you can get Gerald on the other leg. There we go. Oh, baby. <laughs> what, what is the discussion? Like? Because obviously, like I said, I, 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 I'm terrible with needles, no tattoos or anything. Um, but what, what is the discussion? Like when somebody comes in and they want a, a, a particular, like, you know, inappropriate place, uh, tattooed, you know, how does that conversation go? Like somebody's like, Hey man, I want my ass cheeks tattooed. You know, like, do you have, is, is there any requirements? Like have you showered today? No, I mean, that's kind of the shitty part of the job. It's like, you just kind of deal with it. You know, uh, the way I go about it, just cause we live in like a day of time where I feel like people get creeped out by like tattoos really easily. I just go about it kind of like a doctor. I'm just like, whatever dude, just show me the spot. We'll just, we'll just do it. You know, <laughs> I try to be as like, Especially when you say it's like a private area, I just try to act like, you know, like right to the point. Like I'll just do the thing. I try to make them like not take the clothes off as much as possible. <laughs> Obviously, it's never that much fun because like people are like, "Oh, do you ever get to tattoo like boobs?" And it's like, "Yeah, but they're not like cool ones." It's usually like <laughs> your four hundred pound man that wants to come in to get Tweety Bird on her titty. But you're not. Stoked. I want Tweety Bird on my boobies. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, the life of a tattooer is not as cool as you would think. It's not like, oh, you just tattoo like baseball day. It's like, no, no, no. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> not even close. It's just saggy stuff all day long. You got to pull the skin to stretch it to get it in. Oh, yeah. My favorite part is when you tattoo like big women like that. You just got to like squish their titty on the armrest. <laughs> it's stress. I was. <laughs> I don't know, like, think about um... Now that's how. He... You thought deathmatch wrestling was tough. Try tattooing a 50-year-old woman on an arm. Oh, yeah. She's the only one that knows your pain. Oh, man. By the way, we'd also like to welcome uh, Nick back into the room. His Wi-Fi was, Sorry. you know, it's... it's, you know, the, it's, internet, it's the internet jobs for no one, and the, I'm included in that. This is, this is why the North is always better. The North yeah. is always better there, Chief. Just saying, so... It's okay. You were cleaning pools today. It's we'll let it slide. You know, we can't talk about who he cleans pools for. Just saying. I was 400 pound ladies, dude. I get it. I used to be a pool cleaner. <laughs> yeah. Nick, Nick's just in it for the, uh, the eventual porno scene that he's like hoping that goes. He's like, uh, come on. Who could it want? be? What's that? I said, that's all I ever wanted. I get it. <laughs> I bet some milk one day, dude. <laughs> Hey, you Nick, go. will you clean my pool, baby? I know, Harold's got, pool got pool. way too many houses with way too many pools for just me, Harold. Well, that's, G- that's Gerald there, property. so watch yourself some respect. Don't you see my mustache? I see my mustache. friend Eddie, the accent. your mustache Sorry. brothers. I'm still, I'm still trying to recover from coming in mid uh, tattooing butt cheeks and titties. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hell of a time to to come on into a conversation. I'm just saying, Nick. Do you have any tattoos? I do. I have one. What is that? It's a uh, it's a dice. And it has it's a dollar sign with dice in it that I got in a basement when I was very young. <laughs> Here comes the money. My wife has. You like don't get tattoos, tattoos unless you get them in basement. Gonna say, speaking of dice, uh, you wrestled Ziggy dice just recently, right? Uh, Circle six. I did. Um, I haven't gotten to watch it yet. I got to see you live. That was amazing. How was the last show? It was great, man. Um, it was like a really good response. You know, like the building was super cool. Uh, it's like kind of like an old legendary building in Cleveland. Um, now, I guess like the Masonics don't live there anymore, which thank God I don't trust them. And somebody else bought the building and, uh, you know, we filled that whole room. It was cool. You know, and as much as people on the internet were trying to be weird about it, I'm like, I don't understand why because that crowd was hot and awesome. Um, yeah. But oddly enough, I broke my hand, and uh, that kind of sucked. I so like I uh, it was on a, on a like, what do you what do you call that wrestling move on a kick out when you kick out of a pin that's not a move. But uh, I pushed him off me, and I felt something funny. My hand got immediately freezing cold. Uh, I went to the hospital later the night. It's called a boxer's fracture, so you could like still move it. But if you try to grab anything, oh, 
I feel like a little girl who stubbed her toe. Like the worst thing on the planet. <laughs> uh, should have had one of these on, Eddie. It's okay. I'll, I'll send you one. I know I should have. Fuck you, Zicky. Uh, it was my own fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Never take credit. Ne never take the blame for anything. You're always right. blame it on that, everyone dude. else. I it's know. all Zicky Dice's fault. We hate Zicky Dice. Zicky Dice. Pull. Unless he wanted to come on the broadcast, then we'd we yeah. He come on the broadcast. I tell him. Pull. Yeah, Zicky's a great guy. You should have definitely have him on the podcast. Yeah, outlandish. Um, but speak, but speaking of Cleveland again, uh, on uh, let me get the date correct on uh, Friday, June 3rd, Old Wrestling comes back to Cleveland, Ohio, at the Beachland Ballroom and Tavern, uh, in which we will be sponsoring the show. And uh, Eddie or somebody he knows in the form of Sticky Fingers will be uh, a part of the show. Um, so Eddie, how how excited are you, or, or have you heard of how excited Sticky Fingers is for Old Wrestling, uh, in a couple weeks? I'm so excited. There's almost no company in the world. I would rather wrestle for old wrestling than the WWE, AEW. Any TV promotion on the planet can all suck it because old wrestling is the best. If you've never been or watched before, you're missing out on, like, seriously, like, probably the most innovative wrestling show you can ever, like, imagine. Yes, tickets tickets still available if you go to uh, – I had the I had the thing. I think it's beachlandballroom.com. Um, tickets still available for that show on Friday, June 3rd uh, at 7.30. Uh, we're excited to be a part of that show in a small form in which our logo is on the, we, we feel like we made it. That's our tattoo on the poster right there. We, we've got this up there. We're so proud to, to be sponsors of the old wrestling show. Um, what, so how did you get involved with old wrestling? Cause obviously, like you said, it's, it's a different type of promotion. Um, so yeah. How, how'd you get involved there? Yeah. Um, Ricky uh, and uh, Fontaine, just super good friends, you know, just two weirdos from Southern Ohio. Yeah, I think they backyarded together. I think that's how they know each other. Um, when I was wrestling, uh, like learning how to wrestle through, uh, I would go there and just set up the ring, you know, and just hang out at all the oldie shows. And then one of the shows before I started wrestling, I got the tag. Uh, not the tag, I'm sorry. I got the referee, a tag match. And mm -hmm. so I've just been around there for a minute. You know, I've wrestled there a few times now. Um, one mm -hmm. time against Ricky, Judge Hugo. And uh, I actually tagged with Marion Fontaine, which is fun because now i'm wrestling them on june 3rd and yes. uh yeah dude great company you know like there's a lot of there's a lot of rules and there's a lot of aspects that kind of uh make it more of an interesting show to watch rather than just like seeing a bunch of canadian destroyers you know <laughs> that brings the fun back in wrestling definitely it's it's character it's character based which you know you can be the greatest wrestler mm -hmm. in the world but if i don't have a reason to care about you i'm not entertained but so that's that's why we fans do the fans that show up to the show do they wear elaborate outfits like in the old time days? Wait, say it again, buddy. I didn't hear what you said. Yes, yes, yes. Do the fans, do they dress up like the old times when they oh, come watch? All of them do. It's awesome. Yeah, yes, I, I love yeah, costumes. Part of it. It's, it's, I was wondering. Oh, go ahead, Ron. Okay. Sorry, no, you're you're saying uh, character work. So Sticky Fingers, is this based on the 90s rapper and the star of the Spike TV Blade Show, Sticky Fingers, the rapper? No, it's the not. But I, it's oh. actually based off the Sticky Bandits from... Uh, That's... Oh. Yes! Yeah. Uh, They're good guys, finally! Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping you're going to be a half-man, half-vampire rapper, but I'm still entertained. I'm still going to... No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was very. I was good. I was gonna say my next. I was like, "There's no way it's not the it's not the rappers. It's the it's the wet bandits." <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the name Waylon comes from uh, Waylon Jennings. If you like country music, yes, okay. Waylon Jennings. He's a rock and roll man. Oh yeah, he's a rock and roll man. I do like that. Uh, but yes, old wrestling on June third, Friday, uh, June third in Cleveland, Ohio, at the Beachland Ballroom. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, if you can't make it, I believe it'll be on High Spots afterward maybe i, I could I, be wrong i think it's iw they, i know they've been on iwtv in the past okay i know i was gonna say if you can't make it to cleveland you will be able to watch the show eventually so uh <laughs> a show in which we are we are proudly a part of a small little bit um i think we should send gerald out to cleveland ohio i really do forever yeah. yes no. i will come see you oh, i lost the screen oh there we go uh, you're good you're back you're here we didn't count you out yet until 10. You're good. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, as we, as we start to wind down, you know, just um, what, what is the, what is the rest of the year looking for? Is, are your, 
are you are you still taking bookings? You know, have you have you filled up the calendar yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got a pretty full year. I mean, realistically, at this point, I don't I don't really care to wrestle for a lot of places anymore. <laughs> I'm probably like the most like unenthusiastic wrestler you'll ever have <laughs> here. I don't care to wrestle for anybody because I think most promoters are big heads, and uh, I just think most people in the business are stupid too. Uh, so I'm a I'm a strict Circle Six guy and also all the wrestling guy. I like that. I, I like that. Um, also, if, uh, if if you were to uh, recommend any a specific place to eat in Cleveland, Ohio, so if I make the trip back out there this December, I'm looking for a place to a nice place to eat. Where where would you recommend? Sure. What kind of food do you like? If it's not like I also I love traditional bar food, but I also like a nice steak. Tight. Okay. Cool. I got two great places. Uh, if you want a really good, tra- if you just want bar food, like bar food in general, go to yep. this place that place is the jam like they have reuben pizzas they have like every wing in the planet like they have a pierogi pizza i don't know if you know what pierogies are because i guess most oh, people yeah. Have to yeah. um it's so weird I, i've talked about it people look at me like i'm you know, like, <laughs> pierogi. uh there's a second place it's called melt it's basically just a giant grilled cheese place Ooh. uh which is tight like they just basically stuff everything inside of a grilled cheese and it's like the size of your head and then if you want a good steak, uh, there's this place called, oh, Jesus Christ, it's leaving my head. Um, I will have to tell you another time because I cannot remember. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. We can DM each other later. It's okay. Sure. There's usually a, I'm, usually, I'm usually up there the weekend of the Big Ten Championship game, which Ohio State tends to play in. And so I went there the first time and I went to the Winking Lizard Tavern. Um, and oh, I told every, I told everyone I'm from New York and I bought one beer that night. I had a lot more than one beer. Cause everyone's like, you're from New York and you're rooting for Ohio. Come on in, man. Oh, your yeah. family here. Oh, listen, if you're, if you like Ohio sports, I've never been anywhere else that people like their sports team more than us. Cause our sports team suck besides yeah. like Ohio state, <laughs> especially Browns fan. If like you get near a Browns fan, you tell them you like the Browns <laughs> state. That dude will probably get on his knees for you. Like, they will love you that much. And he's only probably got one tooth in his mouth, so that would be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I remember um, the first time I went there, so we went um, we went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and it was the same day as a Browns game. And so everybody's going into the Browns game. Me and my sister, the Magnificent Margaret, are going into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We get out at about the same time. We're just on a high. We've seen this great exhibit on everything and whatnot. And then you just see these 50,000 depressed people like to, like threatening to jump into the into the river there. I'm like, don't don't do it. It's gonna be okay. Go check out the rock hall. It's gonna be great. Um, but so yes, Eddie, as as we wind out, we'll give you the floor. You can promote uh, whatever you got if you got merch, social media, upcoming shows, anything like that. The floor is yours, my friend. Sure. Um, sorry if you can't see me right now. It just kind of got dark for a second. No problem. Um, yeah. So. Merch, uh, I just put out, I just put out new hats. Um, I'm kind of lazy about everything. Uh, eventually, I'll give you guys a little sneak peek. Um, I'm gonna put out brand new Eddie only thongs, so that'll be super fun. Oh. I feel like everybody's me wearing one, so now you guys get two too. There you go, Gerald. Listen, do they come? I love these thongs, thongs. <laughs> Gerald, Gerald. I'll specifically make one for you. Yeah. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> I better get pictures. Um, Always. Fun. I will be plugging an Eddie Only fans here in the next week. Oh, wow. So for all you sex perverts out there, Dan Housen, pay me, Nick. Dan give me some of that AEW money. I want it. <laughs> and uh, outside of that, though, yeah, as I said before, fuck the wrestling world. I'm only wrestling for Circle Six and old wrestling. Unless somebody wants to pay me a lot of money, then I'm coming. I'll it. pay you a million dollars. You just Perfect. come hang out with me. That's fine. I'm so rich. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But yes, like we said, if you want to see uh, Eddie in action and uh, with a little bit of nerd uh, representation there, you can check out Old Wrestling Friday, June 3rd in Cleveland, Ohio at Beachland Ballroom. Tickets still available. You can join our Patreon, patreon.com slash WNRDB. Check out our Pro Wrestling Tea store, prowrestlingtees.com slash the wrestling nerd broadcast. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And of course, subscribe to the channel because if you haven't done so, you suck. So subscribe to the channel and nice things will happen to you. I guarantee it. So uh, on behalf of myself, the King, Dave C. The Voice, the Commissioner of the Broadcast, Mr. Gerald Z. Puppet, 
the microbrawler scholar, Mr. Ryan Crossley, and the founding late father, Mr. Nick Carpenter. Of course, Cleveland's own Mr. Eddie Only. Don't forget to tell your mother you love her every day because like Kevin Durant and Mom, you're the real MVP. Good night, everyone, and God bless America. Thank you, guys. Thank <laughs> you.